Hi, I'm Joe James, and today we're going to take a look at a typical use case for machine learning called the classification problem. We're going to solve that classification problem using the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. I'll show you what the k-nearest neighbors algorithm is, and then we're going to code it in Python. And it's really not that difficult, so I think uh, if you're an intermediate level Python user, you should be able to follow along with no problems. And as usual, my code is all going to be in a Jupyter notebook. I'll post the code on my GitHub site at the link down below so you can download the code and run it on your own. So what is the classification problem? Well, in this diagram here, we're given three different types of labeled, we'll call these labeled or known objects, right? We have blue squares, we have green triangles, and we have orange circles. And here we have them mapped out on a graph with, let's say, x and y coordinates. So we, we have, let's assume, two attributes. In reality, we may have many more than that. But we have, in this diagram, two attributes, x and y coordinates. And we have each one of these objects uh, plotted out. So we can see where, it's x, where it lies on the x, y uh, plane. So that is basically three different types of objects. And then when we introduce a new object, here we have a red star, we have to try and identify what that object is, given what we know about the already labeled objects. So we know its attribute values, so we know where to put it on the x and y coordinate plane, but we don't know what type of object it is yet. And our, object, our goal is to try and classify that into the right group to identify or label that object. So the red star, hmm, it's kind of right here in the middle. Uh, it's hard to say. So look, if, if we look, if we pick the closest object to it, it's probably this yellow circle. So we might say, wow, well, the nearest one is the yellow circle. Uh, but then again, if you look at, say, let's say the four or five nearest objects to it, well, there are two blue squares that are close. So you might assume, oh, this could be a blue square. Uh, but what the k-nearest neighbors algorithm does, it allows you to control kind of how many near, nearby objects you look at and compare it to. And typically that number of nearest neighbors that you're looking at is an odd number in the range of say 5, 7, 9, or 11 in that range. Um, in this example, we'll look at the seven nearest objects to figure out what we, we predict this red star to be. So if we look at the seven nearest objects, in which case k is equal to seven, k is the number of nearest neighbors that we're gonna compare our red star to. We're looking at using some distance metric, right? How far is the red star from each one of these other objects? So we're gonna pick out the seven nearest objects, look at what each of them is, and then each of them basically gets to vote on what it thinks the red star is. In other words, we see four green triangles only two blue squares and one orange circle. So we're going to predict that the red star actually belongs in the triangle group. It's a triangle. So that's basically how the k-nearest neighbors algorithm works. Let's look at some code. We're going to start out with two libraries that we need, NumPy and Pandas. First thing we're going to do is load up some data. We're going to use the Iris data set again, same as we did for my last video. If you've seen that video, that's going to be helpful for you. If not, don't worry. Uh, but the Iris data set essentially has 150 labeled or known objects, right? They're labeled with a species that they, they belong to. And they each have four attributes, and there are 150 rows of data. So we can compare our target object to each one of these 150 objects and find the seven most similar ones. So let's load up this, what we'll call the training data, because it's labeled known values. We're going to call that the training set. And this is what it looks like. It has four known columns of, of data. Um, we have an, a redundant ID column here that we don't need, and we're going to rename these column names to just integers. It'll just be simpler for us. And then you can see there's a column for species. So first we'll drop this redundant ID column, and then we're going to save these column names that we have, the strings, to a list called calls, so that we can reuse those later to label graphs or anything if we need those. Um, and then we're going to rename the columns as integers, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. And lastly, we're going to add an additional column on the right end here for distance, and we'll default that to a high number, let's just say 9999. So as we go through each one of these 150 labeled records, 
we can compare our unknown or target record to each of these and calculate the distance between them. So when we run that, here's what our uh, modified data set looks like now. This is our training set. So we have four columns that are uh, numerically columned and the species and a default distance of 9999, which is a high value. Now let's create a target item so that we can compare to each one of these items in the training set and figure out what its distance is. So I've picked some values here and I put into a, a list and we're going to pass that into the series constructor so we can get a target uh, in the form of a data frame. And then we can compare the distance. So this will give us a target with those values. The target is our unknown item that we're going to try and identify using k nearest neighbors. So how do we calculate this distance between our target value, our target item, and each one of these labeled items? Well, we're going to compare the attributes, right? We're going to compare attribute zero of this one to attribute zero of the target value. And then we're going to compare attribute one to the target, attribute two and attribute three, and so on. There are a variety of different distance metrics that you can use for measuring distance. Uh, what we're going to use in this case is called the Euclidean distance. So it's similar to the Pythagorean theorem that you use to measure uh, the distance between two points on a, on a plane. And the formula looks like this. So the difference between uh, x and y is basically a square root of a summation of the difference between x and y squared. So for us that boils down to a simple line of code and you can see that we're going to set the distance column, each value for each one of these items in this column. The training set's distance is going to be equal to the zeroth attribute of the first item minus the zeroth attribute of the target squared. And then we're going to do the same thing for the first column, second column, and third column. So we've got four differences squared here. And then at the very tail end here, we take the square root of that summation, raise it to the 0.5 power, that's the square root. And then I'll print out every 10th row so you can, you can see what the result of that is. We're just using one simple distance formula to calculate the distance of each known object in this training set from the target item. And we've done that with a single line of code. The beauty of pandas, we do not need to use for loops. Every 10th row of data, you can see what our distance measure here is. And so all these iris and setosa um, species have a distance of around five, it looks like. And, and then the um, iris versicolor species have a distance between one, two to three. And then the iris virginica species has a distance of, it looks like, below one in most cases. So just looking at the result here, we can see that the nearest neighbors are all going to be Iris virginica. So Iris virginica is probably going to be the right answer here. Next what we'll do is we'll set k equal to 7, meaning that we're going to look at the 7 nearest neighbors, just as we did in the, in the little graph that we looked at earlier. So we're going to look at the k equals 7 nearest neighbors. We already know the distance from our target object to each of the training objects, so really all we need to do is sort them by increasing um, distances and then pick the first seven items. So that's what we'll do. We'll do train.sort uh, by distance ascending. And then we'll create a new list called KNN, which is the nearest neighbors, and it'll be basically the head or the top seven items k equals 7. Here we just put k equals to 7, so we'll get the, the top 7 items. And we're going to add the species to this k and n list. And what we get is a list that is all iris virginica. So what we would next want to do is pick the most popular item out of this list and say that is our prediction using k and n. In this case, it's homogeneous, right? Every single item of the top seven are all iris virginica, so it's a no-brainer. But typically when you run this algorithm, you may have a variety of different answers here. They're not necessarily all going to be iris, iris virginica. They're not always going to be the same, so it won't be quite as obvious. So what you want to do is pick the mode or the most popular item in that list to make your prediction. 
So we'll import from statistics, we'll import this mode function, and then when we print the mode of KNN, well, we already know what that's going to be, that's Iris virginica. So that is our prediction about the species of the test item. And if we want to see what this looks like graphically, we can uh, import matplotlib and throw together a quick scatter plot, which I, by the way, I walked through this in, in good detail in my last video. So if you haven't watched how to graph all this data on scatter plots, I go into a lot more detail in my last video. So I'll go back and watch that. But we'll plot this. I added the target into our graph with this single line of code here. And this is looking at attributes numbers two and three only. Uh, but I put the target in orange, so you can see the orange dot there, and you can see why it was picked as Iris virginica, because it's lumped in with all the blue ones, which are Iris virginica. So graphically, you can see that we made the right choice. Now, the goal of this video was to teach you how k-nearest neighbors algorithm works and what it's used for. In practice, you'll most likely use an existing k and n a library rather than writing your own algorithm. So you may use scikit-learn as a popular um, k-nearest neighbors existing library that you would just need to load up and run on your data. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.